Hey everybody, thanks for coming. Welcome to a Diary of a Happy Hooker. I'm Liz and this is my yarn diary of my crochet adventures and <clears throat> excuse me. Um just general yarny fun. So thanks so much for joining me. Um, you may recognize me from uh, my channel before, which was Liz's Lovies. And while I very much enjoyed um, making that channel and um, being part of it, uh, some things just weren't quite me. And I felt like I needed to change things up a little bit and be just, you know, be a little more authentic. I'm a little more authentically me. Um, so here we are. Diary of a happy hooker. <laughs> um, like I said, my name is Liz. I live in Wisconsin, um, very near Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Um, I am in my forties. I have four kids. I am very happily married and um thankfully my husband is fairly supportive of my yarn hobby as he grew up with a mom mother who was also um into yarn arts so she does knitting and crochet she's very talented um so yeah welcome aboard grab something to drink i have got here a fancy glass of Zevia that is cream soda flavored today. It's good stuff. I like that. Um, so yeah. So what's going to be different? Well, um, I'm going to be a little different. <laughs> um, in Liz's lovies, I think I took myself a little too seriously and I just want to have like fun. Um, I'm going to break my long video that I used to make into three shorter videos. So I'm going to make a Monday, a Wednesday, and a Friday video. Um, and what that will uh, enable me to do is concentrate a little better on uh, what I'm talking about. So Monday will probably be like a miscellaneous Monday. Um, something about, you know, if I pick up yarn, it'll be there. Um, you know, kind of what's going on in my life, that kind of thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Speaking of which, I'm just getting over COVID. So <laughs> you may hear a little coughing. Um, didn't have it bad. Thankfully, I didn't end up in the hospital. I had it, my husband had it, and our daughter had it. Um, but it seems like it's hanging on to me the hardest. So. <laughs> um. So that'll be Mondays. Uh, Wednesdays will be Whip Wednesday in keeping with the theme of the yarn community on YouTube. And I will show my whips on Wednesdays. And then Fridays will be Finished Object Fridays um, where I will show finished objects and um, maybe pieces up, you know, like if I'm doing a granny square or a mile a minute blanket or something that way. Um, I might show you the pieces to that that I finished um, that go into it without showing you all the previous ones from Wednesday. <coughs> Excuse me. I also have three dogs. Um, the one you'll probably hear the most <laughs> is Tahoe. He is the newest member of the family. We've had him since August of this year. He's adjusting well, but is still a little unsure. Sometimes needs reassurance. Um, he's very happy to have a sister about the same size as him, um, our dog Topeka. And um, they're about the same age. So he's very happy to have a playmate. And, of course, if you were here on Liz's Lovies, you may remember Oren. And he's our Shih Tzu. He's 11 years old. 
not so fond of the three and four year olds running around playing and being five to six times bigger than him and he almost getting trounced once in a while while they're playing. Um, Tahoe and Topeka really like to play tug of war. And I don't have to tell you that as adolescent dogs, they really aren't paying attention to where older little brother Orin is. <laughs> and um, so Orin just kind of tries to stay out of their way. He's on the back of the couch a lot. Um, after he's walking into the room, no, no, buddy. Because the other two, I can hear them playing out in the living room. Um, so you may hear some miscellaneous growls, barks, um, jingling because of their dog tags. Um, all, all of it's normal. <laughs> um, Tahoe is very funny. He sounds very vicious. He sounds like he will rip your head off, but I don't think there's a mean bone in him. He just sounds that way. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so if you hear animal noises in the background, it's probably Topeka and Tahoe playing. So, what happened? <laughs> um, the short answer is life happened. Um, I never really made it a secret on Liz's lovey is that I live with depression and anxiety. Um, and I'm on medication for it, and most of the time it works great. Um, we have been dealing with some struggles with our 17-year-old, um, trying to get him to stay interested enough in school to graduate. He's a junior this year, and right now all I want for Christmas is to know my son will graduate. <laughs> um... He's just, you know, school just isn't his thing. He has other things he would much rather do than sit in school for hours and hours and learn things he feels are not useful. Um, and, and I understand that, you know, that's the way it is for some kids. And he's one of those kids. And that's okay. We just need to keep working with him. Um, and we will. And... I don't have any doubt in my mind that he will graduate either, <clears throat> excuse me, either on time or, you know, he'll find a different way to obtain his high school diploma after high school, if that's the choice he makes, which would be unfortunate, and we're working hard for that not to be the case. But anyway, so we've been dealing with that. Um... In 2019, I became a grandma, and I know I showed some pictures of my grandson on here, uh, on Liz's Lovies, and he turned two this year, and last year I just really wanted the time to spend with him and helping my son become a dad, um, and not have to worry about, okay, well I can work with you until this point, and then I have to go do a video. <clears throat> excuse me and um and I'm really glad I did that my son has really taken to being a father he's a really really good dad um you can tell you know you can tell he's a first timer and you can tell he's young you know all the telltale signs from those of us that been there done that <laughs> you know but honestly he he loves his son. He has um, Theo's best interests at heart all the time. Um, and that includes um, Theo's mother. Uh, they're not in a relationship together. But, um, but my son Trey knows that taking care of his son means being on good terms with his mother and cooperating together. So... I'm really proud of him for that. He's he's done a lot of of work to um to keep that relationship um friendly. I don't know how else to put it. 
And so is she. I mean, it's not a one-way street. They're, they're both very committed to making sure that they are both in their son's life and that, um, and that they're both involved. And I'm very proud of both of them for that. Not just my son. I'm very proud of my grandson's parents, both of them, um, for being parents, you know. Um, my second oldest son uh, moved out about a year ago. Um, and I think that's about the time I dropped off from here. <laughs> Because everything was just kind of all hitting all at once. Um, Theo was born last in September of 19, so he turned a year last year. Um, Talon moved out. Trey ended up moving back in here this past summer. No, it was earlier this spring. Um, but Trey was kind of moving at the same time. Anyway, there was just a lot going on about this time last year and I just I just couldn't <laughs> um and then you know on top of all of that there was some emotional stuff going on with some other family members um not immediate family members um what do you call them just not distant but you know like uh, oh natural family natural family members <coughs> Remember, family of origin. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, there's a lot of emotional garbage going on there for me. And obviously, I don't want to bring that here. Because nobody wants to hear and listen to that. And I don't blame you. Because <laughs> we're here for the yarn. So, without further ado. Yarn. Um, on Liz's Lovies, I had a section in there called Ancient Whips. And part of my Ancient Whips were driving me a little crazy, and that was contributing to my stress level. Because I had all these things that I felt like I needed to get done. They needed to get done. And it made me kind of avoid crocheting. And it really made me avoid my craft room. And I didn't like either one of that. Those, <laughs> those things at all. Um, so I finally buckled down and got my ancient whips pretty much as dumb as they were going to be. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I think, I can't think of anything... There might be one or two things left that I might find something to do, but for right now, I'm done with ancient whips. <laughs> um, now, that's not to say I don't have whips. I do have whips. They're just current whips. Um, I also have um, hooker plans. Yes, the hooker still has plans, and I will share those as um, I get to them. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, another source of stress I had was I did not like how my yarn was organized because really it wasn't. <laughs> I mean, I had some yarn red heart over here, you know, down, down over there, and then I had some red heart on the same shelf up there, and I had some back over on this um, bookshelf right here. It was just kind of all over, and I didn't like that. Um, and I think personally, because I had so much scattered everywhere, it made it to where I had a lot more mm, scraps than maybe I should have. Um, and that became pretty apparent as I started balling up all my scraps and organizing those better. So I have made a commitment to myself that in 2022, I am going to use up 
as much scrap yarn as I possibly can. Um, and I have four 10 by 10 cube boxes full of scrap yarn. <coughs> Excuse me. To use up. And I have it organized. I've got um, one box has pink, red, and orange. One box has green, blues, and purples. One box has um, like your variegated and your striping stuff. And one box has the grays, blacks, and tans, browns, neutrals. Um, and I did intentionally leave out white because I do have um, another or two other scrap baskets. They're um, like the round clothes baskets that have my white scraps and my size five and bigger size scraps. So they've got that, that one's got like my, oh, what's in there? Oh, my, like my Burnett blanket yarn, um, the faux furs, my, um, homespun yarn. I know nobody likes that stuff, but I do. I mean, I don't mind it. Um, obviously you need a big hook and a big stitch and open stitch anyway, you know, corner to corner, granny square, something that way. Um, but I don't mind homespun. Um, so I went through and I took time to ball up all my scraps, organize them so they're easier to find. Um, and then I went through all my yarn and I organized it by brand mostly, um, and weight. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can't see the shelf over here, but I've got um, one whole shelf of size one, and then a shelf of, um, Lion brand size four and Caron size four. And then I've got, um, Big Twist and, um, Loops and Threads. And I've got Hobby Lobby yarn, and that's all size four, and a couple of size threes, but they're bigger threes, so they're actually kind of fours. And then underneath of that, I've got my size fives and sevens. Yep, under there, and I've got my homespuns under there. And then on the bottom shelf of the bookcase, I've got all my size sixes. Um, and a lot of that is loops and threads of Rizma, I think, but don't quote me. <laughs> but this right here, this whole bookcase, this, and then the next two shelves are all Red Heart. Uh, the top shelf is Red Heart with Love. And then the next two shelves are um, Red Heart Solids and then the Red Heart, like variegated self striping, things like that. And then the last two shelves of that bookcase are where I have my 10 by 10 boxes with my scraps. So this bookcase right here, this one, this is my goal this year is to get through this bookcase, get rid of all of my Red Heart, all of my Red Heart with Love. All of my scraps, or at least as much as I can. <coughs> Excuse me. So I don't feel overwhelmed by it anymore. Um, Red Heart. The other reason I really want to get rid of it is because I want to work with um, different fibers. I've worked with Red Heart for a long time. And I kind of want to grow into something a little different. Um, I don't know if that's going to be you know, a premiere yarn or if that'll be I love this yarn um because I do have a Hobby Lobby right next to me you know not right next to me but um not far from me I have a Hobby Lobby a Joann's and a Michael's all within about a half mile radius of each other not far from me um and I have a local yarn store that I need to start frequenting more 
now that they're open again. Thank you, COVID. Um, <laughs> hasn't, doesn't that stupid bug just throw so many wrenches into this thing? Into life in general? Just crazy. But anyway, so that's my goal for 2022, is to get rid of this and start using more of that stuff that you can't see, but I don't know if I can... Hold on, I'll try and get this so that it's not too tippy-tippy right there. Oops, there we go. There, I'll go nice and slow back so nobody gets seasick. <laughs> My bones, hold on. There we go. So. And that's not all. Uh, in this closet here, I have a small bookshelf that has all my cakes on it. <laughs> I have a little bit to go through here. <laughs> and I will. Um, I just, it's fun finding projects now and matching yarn to what I want to do. Um, I'm enjoying being in my craft room more. It's also an office. You can see the printer right here. There's the printer. Um, and yeah, so I am looking forward to getting back to this. I've missed all of you. I have missed being on YouTube and in the yarn community. I never left. I just didn't make videos. I have been stalking <laughs> um, a few channels and um, yeah, so at some point I will be showing my gratitude for their commitment to YouTube because they deserve it. So, and so do you. And I am going to be here three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. These are about all the longer my videos are going to be. Um, because like I said, I think that one every week was just a little too long. So for now, I am going to let you go. Thanks for joining me in my video diary of my hooking adventures <laughs> and I will see you again soon. Bye now.